Welcome to this episode of the LTG Show, part of the LTG Network. This show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. This is our weekly tech news show where we talk about tech news, tech, you know, news techy stuff. And, of course, this week we'll be going over some CES stuff. But before that, let me go ahead and introduce my two co-hosts. Tonight I have with me Andrew Lee. It's going and Mr. Victor Bogna. Hey, what's up? So you boys have been on the road, and I know you just got back, so I know you guys are tired, so thank you very much for bearing with me this evening. I really do appreciate it, and I know the rest of the Lazy Tech family and listeners and viewers do as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, uh, let our viewers and listeners know how to get in contact with us. One way is email at comments at lazytechguys.com, and another way is making a phone call at 2707 seven two two five two nine nine and as always we are on youtube at our youtube channel at lazy tech tv so before we do some ces stuff let's talk about some non-ces related uh topics so i know you boys have been completely in the zone with ces so this might be some news to you huh yeah back to no. reality right <laughs> yeah see there's a new social network that got well not Oh, I say relatively new. It, it, it's been in beta for quite some time, but it finally got launched into just the public sector, and it's called Branch. And essentially what Branch allows you to do, um, the way that I understand Branch, is that um, you're, you're able to start a conversation with your friends on Twitter, but through a separate social network, and, um, and then other people that have nothing to do with you can also see your conversation if you make it make it public and they can insert their own comments or insert their own kind of their forethought. So if you think of it like a form, because I know you guys have been to like BBSs and forums and stuff like that and you, mm -hmm. you know definitely gaming forms are, are big for you Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a lot more interactive because within each post, within each reply, you could have your own link, you can highlight and say, um, yes, let's say I, I have a passage of about five sentences, one sentence means a lot to you. Like I hit home to you with this one particular sentence and mm -hmm. you highlight it, you can branch off of that and that allows you to um, have a side conversation that is still related to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, it's free. Um, you, you can even embed Spotify and SoundCloud tracks. Um, do you think something like this, because you have to sign up with a with a Twitter account, there's no other way to do it. So, mm -hmm. do do either of you gentlemen think something like this is 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 a good thing at this moment in time? Do you think we need another social network, or should we just stick with the forms that we're used to and and just keep the social norm the way it is? Um, it's it's definitely different. I mean, I it, when you were explaining, it kind of struck me as kind of like you know, to the things that you already brought up, like Twitter and Instagram kind of stuck together. So, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily needed that we need another social media type of platform since we already have, you know, technically we have Facebook, we have technically MySpace, even though that's kind of taken to the back burner right now. Right. I mean, um, MySpace, MySpace is more music related. Uh, Facebook is more, I got drunk last night and Instagram is, this is what I got drunk with, you know? Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and Twitter is every drunk tweet every 30 seconds so yep. this this I, I would say it's it's more of a conversational kind of a mm -hmm. maybe, maybe a little bit more mature mm -hmm. uh, I mean Vic do you do do you do forms at all with, with your videography or photography stuff and do you think something um, like this would be cool because you can post you can embed photos and say hey mm -hmm. this is what this photographer did and this is what I did based off of that photography using this filter and instead of sending people links you embed it into just one feed right well, I mean when you said it it's like a like a forum that's exactly what I thought of it as and myself I'm, I'm more of a researcher I'm not so much a poster like on you know forums like I, I, I think they're great for you know like when you have a computer problem or like you said a you know a, um, uh, video or camera problem. So, I mean, all I got to say is it being a new social network, uh, just good luck. Yeah. 
I mean, I, one, one thing that's really nice about this is that you can actually embed the whole conversation into a blog post. So let's say one of us, or, or Rad, is going to talk about you know the pros and cons between this operating system, this operating system, and that operating system. And he doesn't just say, you know, these are just my views. Here are all the views of all these other people. And yeah, granted, all these other quote unquote other people won't necessarily be um, experts in that particular field, but it shows that there is, um, I, I guess, an audience that cares about that topic. I don't know. I, I just thought it was it was pretty interesting. I don't think it would be something that I would check on a normal on, on a normal basis. Mm -hmm. It just might be another kind of a cool way to crowdsource certain things. Um, well, so for actually, what I'm thinking of it like. Maybe it's kind of like a Yahoo Answers kind of thing. <laughs> kind of. That's actually a great. That's a great um, comparison because um, because it, it really is that because you can you can start off the conversation by saying why is the sky blue and some guy will come and say well here's a YouTube link and that explains it in thirty seconds or less and then some other person can you know do their own thing but you see it in a kind of organic kind of um, call and response instead of just a Q A Q A. It's like you see it develop, and you see it develop in real time. So um, there was one thing else that I, I wanted to mention about it too, because um, the branches, as they call it, um, a lot of them are public, if not all of them, and you can actually you can actually see the most um, the trending branches. So one of the trending branches is should marijuana be legalized? You know, uh, another trending branch is you know what's your thought on gun control? You know, the Cow Palace just had a huge uh, gun show, and people were up in arms about that, yada, yada. What are your thoughts? And it's just kind of interesting to and, – and this type of social media where before a form – I'll be honest with you. A form to, to non-tech geeky people is a little scary because there are rules. There are admins. You know, you just have to – you can't say this. You can't ask a question that's already been asked. Like, oh, my God. This just seems a little bit more user-friendly. Um, I'd say one of the biggest drawbacks, though, is you have to have Twitter to join. So. But, yeah, go ahead to uh, branch.com. It, it, it spells exactly how it sounds. And uh, try it out for free if you have uh, Twitter. If you don't, uh, then don't. So that's all. <laughs> Um, the next thing I want to talk on is something that is, I wouldn't say close to my heart, but something that I've been really excited for, which is, a, which is actually um, not a petition, but it's an amendment that Obama signed called the Video Privacy Protection Act Amendment Act. No, I put act in there twice, of 2012. And um, so if you want to get that up there, Vic, uh, essentially what this does... Well, let's recap. Before, up until now, it was illegal for social networks to publicly sh um, show people's video rental information. Even if you said, no, go ahead and tell everybody what I've been seeing on Hulu and, and, uh, and Netflix, the government wouldn't let you do that. And maybe, Vic, you can touch on in a minute why that was not allowed. I, I couldn't actually find in my research why. But Yeah, honestly, um, I'm not sure either. <laughs> dang it. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to go and speculate and say they're just mean. Um, but no, um, now if you are signed into Hulu and, and Netflix, be aware that maybe in the next couple of weeks there's going to be an upgrade to Netflix that allows you to publicly share that Right now, I'm watching this show. And right now, I'm watching this movie. And I think that's cool because if you think about it, m uh, music companies like Spotify and Slacker already do it. It's kind of They do it to a point where it's a little annoying um, almost every time Rad updates his playlist. There's a, there's a freaking p a f a Facebook post about it. But in any case, we all love movies. And I don't know about you, Andrew, if you have, mm. uh, if you have Netflix or not, but I know Vic... Rad and uh, Sean and I always talk about our favorite um, Netflix shows. And for me right now, it's been WWF and WCW all the way for no apparent reason. It's just one of those things. I, I finish one episode of something WWF related and it says, you might like this. Like, you know what? I do like that. And then I'm watching something else. So um, 
but yeah, you'll be able to share your instant queue, your watch list, and uh, I think this will definitely help for more recommendations, uh, help for a lot for more you know, um, open discussions about particular shows. But do you think that this will also help Netflix, Hulu, or whoever, Amazon Prime, help them decide if a certain show should be available or they, or they should push harder to make a certain show available on their streaming service? Or is that completely up to the original production company um, like Time Warner or Disney or something like that? Um, well, I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, I would almost say it kind of helps kind of, it kind of, it kind of answers the question in a certain way, but it kind of like, how do I say this? Um, it almost seems like from the information that they get from the, the sharing, it kind of gives them the idea, okay, well, a lot of people are watching this, so it might help them as far as making those videos available to the general public because of those uh, those social sharing. Now, now do you do you want people knowing what you watch? I mean, because cause there are certain mm -hmm. times, let's be honest, um, mm -hmm. Vic, there are certain times where because of our children, they're watching stuff in the kids section, but even though it's in the separate kids section, it shows up on our side as well. Like, I just yeah. watch Inspector Gadget, and I don't know, I'm not embarrassed by it, but, you know, it shows you watch the revamp of My Little Ponies three times in a row. It's like, Vic, what are you doing? You know, I'm just using that as an example, but do, do you think that <laughs> do, you, do you think that there's there's anything wrong with that um, or, or people shouldn't, um, shouldn't really worry about sharing all this info? Well, I mean, this is going back to, uh, I guess, going back to what we were saying, like not knowing why it was illegal. But I mean, seeing the name of the name of it is, you know, Privacy Protection Act. It probably has everything to do with privacy. So, um, and I mean, to me, that that's still kind of a big thing. And and like like you said, just, there may be things that, like I watch, I like watching a lot of documentaries because I like to see how people tell stories and and how else, and you know, for editing and stuff like that. How else to see that when you're not exactly control, controlling the story, right? Like when it's already there in history and stuff. Um, so yeah, there. I mean, you know, there's a lot of World War II documentaries and stuff like that. And I mean, somebody's gonna say, "Oh my God, he was watching something about Hitler, so he must be a, a, a sympathizer." I don't. I don't think it's gonna get to that, but it's. <clears throat> I mean, who knows though? Like, there's a lot of people that may have a lot of time on the internet that are that are just they're just seeing um, you know if we're getting articles that are saying um, this is what your Facebook feed says about you or mm. you know things like that yeah I mean who's to say that we're gonna start getting articles saying this is what your Netflix queue is saying about you you know which yeah to me it's mostly cartoons but <laughs> <laughs> You're a kid at heart. And you know, it's funny you should say that. Um, about three weeks ago, I was in this whole World War II thing, and mm -hmm. Dosh Garnet, there was a lot of Hitler and Mendel related stuff. <laughs> and that's just what it was. You know, it's like, all right, let's, let's see what the atrocities they, ca they, ha they caused. So, yeah, um, if you, as a viewer or a listener, are for or against this whole thing, uh, that Netflix and Hulu are possibly going to do now that Obama has signed this amendment to the act, let us know, 707-722-5299, uh, or email at comments at lazytechguys.com. Actually, sorry, well, while we were kind of sort of still on it, I mean, how, how did you feel about, like, how on the PS3 it tells you, like, whenever you have a Blu-ray in there or a game in there, it tells everybody on your friends list, which, I mean, given it's not as big as, like, your right. Facebook um, list, like, how do you feel about it telling people, like, what you're playing? I'm the wrong person to ask because I'm in the – I have no problem with being in the public. You guys see how much I I, um, yeah, I check Facebook. into Foursquare? <laughs> I'm surprised you're still my friends on Facebook because of that. <laughs> and every, every time I change a station on Slacker Radio – it shows that on Facebook. I'm trying to turn that off because it annoys me. <laughs> That's how annoying that is. 
but it shows everybody on Facebook and Twitter. Um, but yeah, I no, I, I I never really had a problem with that. In, in fact, it was kind of cool because you know I would be able to say, oh, Vic is playing this game, maybe mm -hmm. I'll join him. Or Vic is watching this can, uh, is watching this on Blu-ray. It's like, oh, that's for, a great show. You know, for games, movie. I can see that happening where, like, yeah, you know, maybe I I can join in also. Hmm. Like like, oh, Tony's playing Street Fighter. I, I'm gonna challenge him or something. So and, me, go ahead, go ahead. For movies where you're not, it's not really. I don't know. I don't I don't see movies as a social thing. Maybe that's what. So m is. maybe that's the next step. I don't. I'm not. I don't know if that's what they're gonna do, but maybe they'll have some sort of interactive section where you're watching Doctor Who, great show by the way, um, <laughs> even the revamps, and you're like, oh, Doctor Who's companion is really hot, and then you're talking to other people like, how hot is she? I don't have a joke, but you know, you just, <laughs> you, it would be maybe a second screen, like you're watching on the PS3 or the Xbox 360, and then the and the app on your phone or the, or your tablet automatically becomes a second screen because it's all on the same Wi-Fi network. I don't know. That is that's. The, I'm sure that's really hard to create in a split second. But <laughs> they're, they're they're already the reason why I say that is they already do that with Get Glue with Viggle. They already do that with um, with uh, the, the, like uh, Into Now by Yahoo. It's all about second screen. So I don't see a reason why Netflix would want to capitalize that on do it on their own playing field. Right. Well, I guess that that would also involve a lot of the content creators and stuff too. But I mean, we but clearly didn't we they, understand why Netflix wants wants this to happen, right? Because the more people like say on Facebook are seeing, oh, so-and-so is watching this on Netflix. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody who doesn't have Netflix is going to be like, oh, I want Netflix now. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's it's kind of how it worked on me. Like, you know, at work people are like, oh, man, I was watching this on Netflix. I was watching that on Netflix. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't happen as much anymore. But, you know, I was like, oh, there's so much stuff on Netflix now. So, yeah. I mean, I might as well get it. And, I mean, the closest I can think of that I was doing – I would do something similar was like when I when I saw it, when I caught Firefly for the first time, the Joss Whedon show. I was telling everybody they gotta mm -hmm. watch it. But I was yeah, you were. Person. But it's a so, legend. I guess that's different. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Did they have a YouTube straight to YouTube show or a machinima show? Um that was yeah, like I... just an online like web series. Like something about the brown coats? I don't know. I don't think so. It might have been fan made. Oh, okay, I, know, okay. I know Fox axed it after a while. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Which kind of sucked. Okay, I'm good. Staying with the whole, uh, <laughs> staying with the whole Netflix theme here. Of uh, we kind of talked talked about it last week, I think. But Netflix now allows for <laughs> shiny. Netflix now allows for she was hot. Netflix allows for um, 3D content for certain subscribers as well as super HD content for subscribers of um, was it Cablevision and Google Fiber. So um, probably not a huge amount of you, but if you do happen to reside in those regions that, and you are a subscriber to Cablevision or Google Fiber, enjoy. And so, yeah, that's cool. That happens automatically or? Yeah, it just happens. In fact, it just happens, and then you turn your browser to a certain URL, and not the browser on your computer, but the browser, sorry, not the browser on your console, but the browser on your computer, you turn to like Netflix slash Super HD, and it will tell you, based off of your internet connection, whether you have Super HD or you don't have Super HD. So <laughs> there's no thumbs up. I'm just doing it here. You hit X. Or it's a green check mark. I, I'm assuming. I don't make this stuff up. Go check it out yourself. Um, all right. So we done with Netflix. We can, yeah. can we just dig it in there. Netflix is cool. It's cool. Um, kind of side note, Amazon because it's a good segue. Amazon Video Prime because I have Prime. Um, no subtitles. Come on, get with it. I need subtitles sometimes. All right. So uh, talking about Amazon. Uh, they now allow you to get a free digital copy when you buy a CD. Now, what's a CD, you might ask? Well, it looks about this size, if you can see in the video. 
And no, so CDs uh, you can still buy them and you can still use them because most cars still have CD players or compact disc players. And um, on certain CDs that you purchase, Amazon will give you a free MP3 version of the CD. And get this, I, I do believe that it's DRM free as well, as is any Amazon song. So, Vic, I know you're an Amazon. Um, you you buy certain uh, tracks off of Amazon. And uh, do you do you find that this would be cool for you? I, I don't think that it costs any more to get both. You just yeah, you, you just get the MP3 players for free, so or the MP3 version for free. So do you see that yourself getting the CD as well? So you get the CD of One Direction and One Direction MP3s, or you just get the MP3s and just rip them onto your daughter's I uh, iPhone? Don't, I kind of don't understand why. If you if if you're doing this to get the MP3 version already, why even have the CD? But I mean, maybe I'm not the market for that. But it's, because there, I, there are still people that buy the CD. Their their right. their main purpose of going to Amazon.com is to say I will buy the CD and wait for it to come to my house. And this. This is maybe just an extra way to get them into the realm of digital cloud music. Like this is a stepping stone for them. I can see that, I guess. But uh, you have to do the hands. <laughs> um, like because I think we're at a point now where we're starting to see that they're understanding that the download version is less expensive than buying the physical version now. Which mm -hmm. you know we were wondering why it wasn't doing that a few years ago, but on on Amazon you know you look up prices of even a you know a brand new CD it it'll be less on the MP3 side, which is good, but um, hey, Vic I, I was gonna say sorry I didn't mean to cut yeah. you off but didn't we have this debate like on the way to CES like how we were talking about like whole albums versus individual songs? Uh, I guess we were. Talking to something, <laughs> about something similar. Where oh, I mean, okay. I was I was kind of just saying that uh, um, I like where the music industry is right now. It's good mm -hmm. for consumers, but I guess bad for the creators because we can choose just to get one song now mm -hmm. if we want to. Like so, you know, if it's if it is a one hit wonder, or whatever, we we don't get suckered into. You know, buying the whole CD, Spin Doctors. <laughs> oh, what? Sorry. Oh, I, I was. <laughs> was I not on mute? <laughs> Did I just say to thousands of people? My name is Tony Hammond. Well, well, the reason why I was bringing it up is I almost seem. It almost seems like, at least to me, that it just seems like it's just an incentive to kind of boost sales. Because, uh, I mean. There was no reason for the promotion other than, you know, hey, you buy it from Amazon, you, we gave you the, the disc, right? Pretty yeah, much. I guess. I mean, I guess it's a so. it's a plus. I mean, similar to, I mean, don't they do something similar with the when when you buy movies from them? Like, like if you buy a DVD, sometimes they'll they'll give you like the digital copy. So. Ultraviolet. Yes. <laughs> sometimes ultraviolet. Sometimes the, I mean um, the ultraviolet's cool if you got a phone. So if you have the proper yeah. subscriptions to the subscription for the ultraviolet subscription. Uh, not really. It's not the subscription you need. <laughs> you have to have a subscription. Okay, we've had this discussion. <laughs> If you want to hear the discussion, check back at podcast number something or other, and it's back there. <laughs> so, Ultraviolet's yeah. another uh, discussion, but I, I think the problem on Ultraviolet's more of the more of the marketing than the implement. Well, it is the implementation too. So I I, I agree with that one. Um, I mean, what, what Amazon has done in the past, if you buy an Amazon movie, mm -hmm. uh, they, they also they, they might give you a dollar or two off on a, the next purchase of a digital copy of a movie or show. That's, mm. that's been my experience whatever, whenever I bought, um, bought an actual DVD and they've said, oh, as, a, as a Prime member or even not as a Prime member, just for buying this, we give you this. Yeah. And it is that incentive to either sign up for Prime or, hey, well, you know that five dollar movie? Well, now it's only four. Now it's only four dollars to me, or or 
you know, five or whatever. Now, now it doesn't cost as much. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to try that out. It, it's really that gateway. So, yeah. well, you, I, I, agree. I, ahead, I was going to say, ahead, I, can agree, I can agree with that because um, when I do buy like digital goods off of Amazon, they do the same thing. I get the email alerts and everything. So, <laughs> all right. So, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on, gentlemen, about the Amazon auto rip? I, I just think it's just a sales we, pitch. <laughs> I don't think we talked about what it's called. So this is called Auto Rip, and it's absolutely free whenever you buy it. Um, mm-hmm. well not, maybe not whenever, but when you buy uh, uh, certain CDs from Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. So yay. All right. So let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'd like to thank our sponsors, which is audible.com. So for you listeners and viewers of the LTG show, Audible is offering you a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. They have over 100,000 books on the service, so you'll definitely find something that you're looking for. And it works on multiple devices like computers, MP3 players, and mobile devices uh, like Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. So to download your free audiobook, all you have to do to, uh, to get that is go to audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. And if you're watching, it's on the screen right there, uh, audibletrial.com forward slash lazy to get your free audiobook. And we thank them for being sponsors of the LTG show. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we are here tonight to talk about, and that's AV, no wait, no, that's CES. <laughs> Wrong show. That's oh, CES. Talk, we I can you were going to say SHOT Show. Ah, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> My parents are actually going to that, so. <laughs> well, that'd be cool. Maybe they could get us in next time. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll see about that, right? <laughs> that AR fit, no, okay. So, um... If, if you didn't know, uh, Lazy Tech Guys LTG was at CES the past week, and I know uh, these two gentlemen that are here with me tonight are really, really tired, and I really appreciate all your efforts out there. Um, Andrew, this was your first CES. You've been to GDG. Uh, you've been to you know GDC with us. You've been to E3 right. with us. What was E3 like? Or sorry, what was CES like <laughs> for you? Um, you know, it, it was really w- weird because, I mean, you do bring up those, uh, those conventions, and, I mean, I kind of expected that, you know, because CES is such a big international stage that there were going to be a lot of people there. But at the same time, I just really didn't ex- know what to expect because I was expecting like, uh, you know, fireworks and explosions and, you know, big giant parades sort of type of thing. But I mean, it, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool experience. Um, you know, a lot of people tend to forget sometimes like for, for us gamers that, you know, aside from, looking into those type of products that we use some of the other stuff that, you know, normal people do too. We're, you know, like, you know, um, no TVs and stuff. Wait. Yes. You have to I've, have a TV. Yes. To play our games on and watch movies. But I mean, you know, honestly, it's, it was just a, you know, a welcomed experience, something that, you know, I do recommend to anybody that has the opportunity to go. Cause if, then you get actually, cause you can actually get to see, you know, a lot of the stuff that, you know, pretty much technology sort of leaning towards not just, you know, entertainment-wise, but sort of um, maybe even in in terms of innovation, like we saw at, like, uh, the Lexus show. Speaking of innovation, (laughs) this was, like, the most interesting thing I saw at CES. I I was actually going to ask you, Andrew, (laughs) going back to you, Andrew, what is, if you could pinpoint maybe one person or mm-hmm. one event or one thing that epitomized your experience at CES, would it be the toilet tablet or would it be something else? You know, honestly, there's a few bunch of, there's a few things. I mean, Vic well, knows. Well, pick one, pick one. Yeah. So we'll move on to Vic. <laughs> like the epitome of my trip, you said? Yeah, I, I guess. So, something that you could say, if someone said, what is the one thing that you took away from CES, whether it be an event, somebody that you met, or or, or, or a product that you were <laughs> like, wow, this is game-changing for me? Oh, Vic already knows the answer to that one. I had a fanboy <laughs> moment. <laughs> See, I made a joke. Mm. Um, I actually got to meet the uh, CEO of Razer. 
by chance. So that that would probably be the major major highlight. Of you the you have to tell them how it happened now, Andrew. I I think all of us want to know how it happened. Oh my god! I because <laughs> I want to have a flashback moment because I, I think I know you well enough to see your mannerisms <laughs> and to see this happen. So hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on mute. I'm gonna listen. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so basically, what, the way it happened was we get we get invited to um, the raise a party over at the MGM Grand, but uh, getting stuck in lo- uh, pretty much what was it uh, traffic for the most part. Um, we pretty much don't make it up on time. So, and then the worst part is nobody nobody knew where that was, and we didn't even figure out where it was. We assumed it as much as it was, it was in a uh, hotel suite. So. Uh, after kind of running around and whatnot, we pretty much kind of gave up, and you know we were kind of starving. So, um, as soon as I get my food, I sit down and I'm like, "Hey, this guy looks hella familiar," and I'm like, I'm "Like Rad, hey, look who's behind me." <laughs> and he's like, "Dude, what are you talking about?" And he looks over, "Is that who I think it is?" I'm like, "I think so." So, we pretty much went from there. Um, Pretty much took a couple shots and you know pictures out, and that was it. But uh, oh, and yeah, you muted yourself. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that, that that was pretty much it. Was pretty much in the uh, the food court portion of the MGM Grand, and that was that's pretty much it. <laughs> was um, funny. what what was he eating? Um, I think he was eating the same stuff as we were, because like they closed the uh, like oh, okay. certain restaurants because it was already like ten o'clock at night. So okay. we were we were having like Philly cheese steaks and stuff like that. Tasty. Well, that's cool. Did you uh, give him your card and say that you were his number one biggest fan? Uh, I didn't do that. Okay, I gave good, him my card, good. Yeah. You passed yeah, he the was, test. He you was giggling like a schoolgirl. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That, all right. That, all I, right. I like that a bit. Yeah. It was just crazy. So thank you very much, Andrew, and uh, hopefully you will be with us again next CES, and I will be there to gleefully jump and joy when we see <laughs> CEOs that we uh, that we like. Um, Vic, this is your third CES um, and your second one as the Bognot. Uh, what would you say is different, better, not so good from the last ones that you've been to? Well, this one didn't seem too much as a spectacle as the previous ones. Like, the first time we went, it was, I believe it was tablets. That was the big the big um, category. And then, because I think that that's when the iPad just came out. And then the, the next one after that, shoot, I forgot what it was. But this year, it seemed like it was, it was, uh, it was 4K TVs. Was the was the pretty much the big category that everybody had to showcase, like Samsung and um, LG, LG, and and it was pretty much who could come out with the biggest TV, which is kind of funny. So <laughs> I think the biggest one we found was a hundred ten inch. Was that right, Andrew? Like a hundred? I think it was a yeah, one. it was a little over a hundred something because I know I think Samsung had one. I think Sony did, if I remember. I'm not sure. So, I know, I know. Sony had some big uh, TVs, and then also like on like Samsung and Sony, I believe LG had one too. The, it was the OLED right TVs, which are pretty expensive right now, and and uh, we haven't seen really big ones until this year. So um, that's another category that's that's coming for um, for TVs and OLED. If you if you don't know, it's 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 a little. Um, uh, the panel is supposed to be um, is supposed to look cleaner and a, a lot better, although the 4K ones look really nice. So um, I don't know if they're going to catch on yet with the market. Um, I mean, HD TV when it came out, like or should I say when plasmas first came out, you know, they were in the tens, tens, ten grands and stuff like that. And that's where we're we're going to be at with the 4K TVs. I think some of them are even 30 or 40 grand. So, um, I mean, for that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the there were the like the hundred inch ones. They strangely enough, they didn't look as good as some like 
the biggest one with really good quality that I, I think I saw was in the 84 inch size. So, um, I mean, it's it's. I think it's something still to look forward to. And I mean, as a as a um, video professional, like we're just starting to see like 4K cameras get down to you know the regular person level, not just mm -hmm. film crews and stuff like that. So. Um, I mean, if it's going to be like how HDTV kind of grab the market pretty quick, I'm I'm still not I, sure if 4K is going to be as fast. Well, I, so. I agree to the sense that when we went from SD to HD, it right. was a jump that we all needed, and once it got into the hands of the regular, I would say, commoner, if you will, mm -hmm. it it just blew up. Right, and it, like, it was I think, a huge yeah. impact. I, I think it's when you started seeing the the high def like camcorders mm -hmm. that's probably when and I mean it, it was easier I think it was easier to sell HD to people than it is to sell 4k because HD looks really good right now yeah and yeah. to tell people that oh look at this 4k even though you know you can't really get 4k content yet mm -hmm. although Sony was showing their player which was pretty huge um, I mean, there there will be ways to get it, but I mean, until or maybe until our bandwidth caps go or something like that, it, well, it there, might not be as fe feasible. Yeah, there's actually a 4K channel, I think, in the, in England, but it's just set up for demo purposes. Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. it's there for. <laughs> if you yeah. have a 4K TV, this is the channel that you go to to show it off of your home. <laughs> um, so, I mean, would you say? Like for, to bring the question to you, the epitome of CES 2003 for you would it be the 4K displays, or would, was there well, something else for you? If you were to talk about the big story, because you know every year there has to be the big story, right? Sure. I I guess it would be the 4K TVs, but if you want to ask what the like the impact ones to me would be, all of these new video game platforms that are going to start coming out. It's going to be interesting to see what, like the NVIDIA, the, Shield. Um, the Project Shield, mm -hmm. which, which strangely enough, when I bring it up to people like like real gamer people like Andrew or to, like I, I talked about it today when, when I went back to work today and I, I brought it up to some friends. The first reaction you get, strangely enough, is, oh, that. I'm like, why? It's like, it looks like an Xbox controller, right? Mm -hmm. To a T. It's like it copied an Xbox controller. What's the first first thing that Xbox fanboys talk about, other than you know Xbox Live is better than PSN? It's 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 like I don't I don't know how you guys can play on the PS3 controller. It's, the Xbox controller is so much better. And then when you sure. ask them why, they're like, it's just so much better. <laughs> <laughs> so Nvidia took that and they made it an Xbox controller. Mm -hmm. And not only that, what do they do? They let it play Steam games. I mean, I'll right. That was huge. It's still that, that's streaming. a huge. Yeah, you still need to stream it from your computer, but it plays real games, right? So they already have like you know a system of 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 uh, you know proven game system that that people you know. Uh, I mean, is it safe to assume that gamers do like Steam? I mean, as a service. I would say PC Andrew? gamers wise, yeah. PC gamers, yeah. Um, yeah I'd have to see that. I will say that um, the day that we, what was it the day before we left? Mm -hmm. um, Razer actually won three uh, CNET awards for the uh, Edge, which uh, I think Rad did an article on, if not already. Right, and that's mm -hmm. that's another that's another platform, right? Yeah. So, I mean, to me, just just like, I mean, I I'm not like a major gamer, but I mean, I have a PlayStation, but it's seeing it from the outside that the Nvidia one just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I mean. Platform wise and business wise, mm -hmm. the other ones like the 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 edge. There's an edge one. Radford was really impressed with the Arcos one, mm -hmm. and that's uh, when he told me the reason why he was impressed with it was because how you can map the buttons, which is okay. been, what's been the problem with a lot of the Android Android games games right now. Yeah. Um. So I mean it. You know, the, with the Arcos one, and and I mean it looks like the common. Thread throughout all of these is Android, though. So, I agree. Hopefully, Android becomes that platform that all these games are going to start being built on, and hopefully, these process this processor is going to be good enough 
um, you know, the Tegra, the Tegra three or the Tegra four. Four. Um, right. Four. But, I mean, four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, again, WWF, sorry. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm hoping we see Street Fighter. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, Capcom. The, um, <laughs> I, I was definitely hoping to that you guys would be able to do um, like a quick hands-on comparison between like the Ouya and the and the and the Project Shield and things like that. So Well the Project Shield was still like, you know, behind glass and they, I mean, they oh, were really? demoing. I, I, I they thought were they demoing. were demoing it. I think they did, but there was a lot on, on the press of conference. There. They were they were yeah. demoing it, but like for the most part, they were just showing people the thing behind the glass, and it was it was playing a looping there demo. There it is. I mean, See, look, look, look at our uh, on our YouTube channel, or uh, actually, I think um, uh, Andrew did a post about it where it embedded the video that we had on there and we talked to um, one of the NVIDIA guys there. Um, yeah, that's actually, right. Actually, I think he was on the Tegra team. Tegra, he was on the he, Tegra team, but still, it was yeah. a pretty mm-hmm. in-depth uh, talk that you guys so had with him. He, and, I mean, the, most of the B-roll I had was either their, their uh, PR picks and, and uh, the thing behind glass. So okay. that, I think that's the most that people got out of it, um, I like. I, I asked if we could, if if they had any that weren't behind glass, and and they weren't, they weren't bringing it out. So. No, so for <laughs> you. <laughs> so, um, if you guys want to hear my take on my CES experience, it was this. Sad cat. <laughs> Just sad cat. All right. Um, yeah. So hopefully, I'll be with you guys next year. So let's let's actually kind of talk about the nitty gritties of just three topics, and we already kind of touched on some 4K, so we'll end with that. But I, I just want to relay our viewers and listeners to check out all the videos that we have on our YouTube channel, and we're constantly updating that channel with new videos that aren't just CES related, but obviously in the next couple of days it will be. Uh, but our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash lazy tech TV, and um, as Vic had mentioned there's a pretty good um, interview with uh, one of the executives from NVIDIA about the Tegra 4 processor, as well as uh, they were talking to a gentleman from Lexus who was talking about the autonomous car and and some other crazy stuff. So, again, gentlemen, thank you very much. And uh, for you listeners and viewers, keep your eye out on the YouTube channel and subscribe. And right. I will be adding more videos uh I mean, there was we shot plenty. Like I have even a lot of uh, Sony stuff, which was pretty cool. Um, actually, sorry to to continue this on because I'm I'm thinking of things as we go along. <laughs> like Sony actually is taking the NFC thing to another level um, in that, like a lot of their audio products and their mobile products, like their their boom boxes and um, uh, things like that, are. Are having are using NFC to uh, to basically you know activate them and stuff. So you would just take your phone and put it up to the to the little marker on the boombox, and then the boombox will automatically start playing it. Um, they have like they're they're trying to have they have a hub for like photo sharing. So you just hook up your you just touch your phone to it. It looks like a like a little airport extreme or you know about that size. Um, um, I know. The Sony guys probably hate me for saying that, but it, <laughs> it's it, you just you just touch it to to it and it, it you know it syncs. I, I guess it syncs with your phone, but pretty much your pictures are end up on that device and it's like a terabyte drive in it. Um, and so yeah, I mean if I know Tony is like re- a real big proponent of the NFC technology, um, and I'm sure a lot of other people are like you know when when are we going to start seeing this and in the real world, so Sony's Sony's taking that, um, taking that to all all the other devices and stuff. So, you, you know, it's funny. My Bluetooth headset and my Android phone are both NFC enabled. Oh wow! So I should be able to just bloop, and they should auto pair. 
Mm-hmm. I, have, I haven't tried it yet. I, I should try it, and I'll let you. I'll let you know if that works. But um, yeah, I've, I've I've heard of other. You know, um, Nokia had that. If you remember Nokia last year when we were at the CES, they had that. And mm-hmm. you just there's a little Nokia boombox, and you just touch your phone to it, and it just automatically pairs. And it's still Bluetooth, but the initial connection is done via NFC, which to a lazy man, to a lazy tech guy, it's just hmm, lazy. Uh, uh, done. And there you go. So that's actually cool to see other OEMs take hold of that and you know do what they can to make it their own. So thank you very much. So some more stuff on CES. Andrew got to talk to the folks at Goal Zero, and they were showcasing some eco-friendly mobile solutions. So, Mr. Andrew. Mm-hmm. Would you like to take the reins and let us know what they were uh, displaying at CES 2003 this year? Actually, there were a few things. Um, one of the ones that they kind of showcased was the uh, little device called the Switch 8. It actually kind of reminded me of a little uh, stimp pack from a video game, actually. But um, basically, it has, by default, USB tips. Um, which can be interchanged out depending on what your mobile device does. And since I have to kind of recap on my article there, um, basically it, it's a 3.6 volt battery. It's a rechargeable lithium ion, and it'll give you about maybe two two full recharges for your mobile device or MP3 player. So it's pretty cool. Um, and actually, the way that the kit the kit is set up is they actually give you a three and a half uh, excuse me a three and a half inch uh, solar panel as well. That's generally pretty much retailing for about 120 right now, but um, unfortunately, it's not being sold separately. But it's sold as, together as a kit. So, uh, is, is that available now? That's available right now, but it's one of their newer units. Um, Did they the say big, like where, or is it only available uh, online retailers? Pretty much. Okay. You can get it from them, but like uh, one of the big ones that I. Well, actually, let me just go down the piece really quick. But one of the ones that they came out with is called the Sherpa 50. And that basically pairs a sort of charger unit with an inverter. And it also comes with a uh, solar panel, too. Um, it's actually pretty cool because it's actually one of uh, it's a more portable device, but it has the capacity to power up a laptop. So it's actually pretty nice. That basically For how long? Yeah, I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> For how how long can the laptop be powered? Um, depending on what the power requirements are on the laptop, it's that they said it can be extended up to about two or more hours. Okay. So, um, as you can see with the screenshot, there it actually has a number of different ports. Um, it has a 12 volt portion, it has one for your laptop, which they'll give they'll have the tips for, as well. So it'll match up to your laptop. Um, what I thought was pretty cool is is that you also have the inverter portion. So if you want to plug in like a three prong or some or something else, another device that works that way, very versatile. Um, plus they give you a bigger solar panel as well. It's a little heavier, but it has the same type of durability. So um, is that is that encased in alloy, steel, metal? It's what like a it? it's like a sleeve almost. Okay. Um, it's actually pretty durable. You won't actually see it on the video that we have on the article, but uh, the the uh, Guy that we were talking to, he actually stomped on it. <laughs> so, um, basically, yeah, he literally stomped on it. So, basically, they're designed to be rugged. Um, they're okay. designed to be basically, you know, like if you're out hiking and camping, doing the whole cliffhanger type of deal. Or if you're a so, disaster prepper. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So, I mean, That's a good they're pretty point. durable. But um, the big thing that they showcased, that they showed at uh, Unveiled, which we unfortunately missed due to unforeseen circumstances... Um, was the Yeti 150. Um, it's actually their smallest solar generator. Um, it, to me, it actually resembled like a really small lunchbox. Hmm. And that actually has the capacity to um, power up a laptop and lights, actually. So basically, um, it's a 150-watt battery and can cover most smartphones up to 15 full charges or two full laptop charges. Um... And it takes about five hours to recharge that box altogether. Wait, so how heavy is it? Um, I think it's about... I saw somewhere on there it was like 12 pounds. And it recharges via the sun? Yeah, it comes... Generally, it's supposed to be come, 
package with the same type of solar panel that comes with the uh, the little inverter that we sh- uh, with the Sherpa. Okay. 50. No, because um, what what, mm-hmm. what Vic said about disaster preparation. I mean, we've had a number of natural disasters just in the past couple of months, right. and you know, um, you can never be too careful. We live in California. Who knows what the heck's going to happen? Well, they, um, so something like this is always good to have in your "quote unquote" back pocket. Maybe maybe not so much the Yeti, but some of the other things too. Oh yeah, definitely, you know. definitely. Because I was going to say the um, the Sherpa fifty, like I said, that one's designed to be portable. The one fifty is more; it's a, still portable as well. But like, if you were planning on like backing up like appliances, that's where the twelve fifty comes in, which um, you'll actually see in the video. They okay, actually, so. actually, um, I think I actually have it on the the featured image, but it's the 150 on top of a bigger box, and it's 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 pretty huge. It, it looks reminds me of a fax machine, literally. Well, it's a but, bigger version of the 150. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it does look like a or or like a laser printer. It looks like. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's pretty impressive actually that that thing can be powered by solar. I want one of those backpacks. <laughs> when, when he when he was explaining to us though, like uh, that you know all of these can be charged by those like small solar panels. Like what was going on in my head is like, and we can't use those big ones to power buildings and houses yet because uh, what? <laughs> because he I mean it was pretty cool because you know he had even the smaller one right you can use the USB right Andrew or yeah basically the they're, by default they're USB ports. But he said that they're supposed to be interchangeable with most smart devices. So, like, say, for example, instead of having to figure uh, fiddle around with uh, cables, you just mm-hmm. plug it in and just... Right. Boop. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, uh, if I remember right, with the at least the big one, the one that looks like a, you know, a Trapper Keeper size that's folded up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, you know, it had USB ports. Well, the small, the 3.5. So I, mm-hmm. I think you can, you can charge a phone straight off of that. Yeah, well, the 3.5 cool. actually has a USB like connector, and then the other one has multiple tips. So, yeah, it's it's Im- it's impressive what they were doing, and like I said, I like always in the back of my head, I was thinking, why aren't we using this to power houses yet? So, well, All right. <laughs> that's another conversation, but I think it's kind of kind of obvious. Where's the money in that? Where's the long term money in that for the government for the state? I guess. But- all right. So I think but what, <laughs> there was a there's an underlying theme that both of you kept kind of talking about and hinting at. Go watch the video. It's not that long. Maybe it's like five six minutes long, and it's you can definitely you can find it for free. I don't know why I said that, but you can find it at La- 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 Lazy Tech TV on our YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. Now this is Lexus. Now, now when people think CES, they don't always think of cars. Um, or at least they didn't really used to. Recently they have. Um, last year, I got to sit in a Tesla uh, sedan, which had NVIDIA processors with full full screen HUDs and this craziness. Um, and Lexus was there talking about autonomous driving, and they had a pretty cool technology that um, that they were showcasing. So, Andrew, mm-hmm. turning the reins back to you, muting <laughs> my microphone, go. Uh, okay. So, basically... During their press conference over at Lexus, they pretty much kind of... Sh- okay, that just kind of distracted me. Good job. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Anyways, um, they kind of showcased a, their test vehicle that they use to kind of implement a lot of the safety features that you see in a lot of production Lexus vehicles today. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the actual terminology, but they kind of showcased a lot of the different sensors that they utilize um, to hope in hopes to kind of give the driver more tools to, you know, at their disposal to kind of adapt to the ever-changing conditions on the on the road for the most part. And uh, Rad actually did an interview with the, um, you might want to correct me on this, uh, BJ, but uh, Paul Williamson, the uh, production manager for Lexus. International. International, product, excuse product me. manager. And basically, I was going to say, the test video vehicle that they have, which you'll actually kind of, the shot's not too bad, is um, it's an LS600 hybrid. So basically, both cars that they have over there are both LS models, 
Um, the one in the sort of lighter silver is sort of just the uh, example of uh, a general production LS. And the other one's the test vehicle. So basically, they kind of use that as a contrast to kind of show you, well, our production LS pretty much has these safety measures already. They have all these different cameras and uh, sort of, I guess you could say, sensors to kind of help the driver, you know, get from point A to point B as safely as possible, to give them more tools to do that. And at the same time, the LS hybrid with all the extra sensors, they're testing out different ways to kind of take that step further, to kind of still be innovative, but at the same time still try to go that direction. So how much control do we want our cars to really have? Um, I don't think it's so much about the car controlling itself. I think it's like the car sensing what's around you. Oh, let me get off that. Sorry. The the car sensing what's around you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you see how the diagrams are being used, there's still technically, I guess, a driver in there. And uh, pretty much like the, the wheels and all the sensors mm -hmm. are, you know, checking what's around you and giving you feedback on that. So... Um, uh, I guess overall it's just to heighten safety, right? <laughs> but it's go it isn't it kind of going to that? I mean, Google's already taking the huge leap with their mm. you know autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. um, I know Mercedes. There was there was a rumor that Mercedes was going to have kind of a, a 3D holographic HUD uh, that would come out of the dashboard and then project onto the screen that would help you drive and check your Facebook status. Don't quote me, but I think that's what I was talking about. And now we have this, uh, another kind of, um, you know, not classic, but, you know, luxury line, Lexus, saying, hey, you know, you have a $60,000 car underneath your butt, but we're going to we're gonna take control of certain things and help you along. But don't you think that is kind of going in the direction that we're not just going to help you now, we're going to start guiding you now? And we're not, we're not going to just guide you now. We're just going to take you there before you even get out of bed. Okay, that's a good point. But you get my point, right? Um, I, I get it a little bit. I mean, that that's, like the guy said, it's kind of like a little bit of trial and error. Like a lot of those safety things are, he was saying are already implemented. So like I was saying, kind of explaining, it's they're just trying to, they're trying different things. And basically that test vehicle allows them to do that. So basically they want to be able to kind of, you know, avoid some of the things that are vehicle related like accidents maybe driver error um, overcompensating for example some of the factors that you know can be sort of what's the word I'm looking for um, not helped but sort of uh, controlled in a sense that you know hey I messed up the car is going to save me pretty much maybe we'll see some more stuff like this at SEMA in November next of uh, this year, uh, maybe, maybe that's usually Car more of a that's me more of a, a flashy show. <laughs> kind this of. is flashy. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I think the I think the key word is guiding, not so much. Right. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you drill down on the the press release, like, like I don't I don't think it's so much you know driving for you. It's it's uh you know like I mean look at this one active safety system designed to avoid a crash mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know or pre crash aimed at preparing for a collision so yeah all right watch and the video let's watch the video <laughs> uh, well not let's now but you yes you <laughs> should watch the video found lazy tech TV um last but not least let's go ahead and talk about 4K one last time. And Vic, since you are the video guy, can you explain to people in the easiest way the difference between 1080p to 4K? That jump. Okay. So and for, and the Samsung and the Samsung TV that that uh, you talked right. about. Right. So 4 4K is essentially four times what HD is, and uh, so this um what Samsung announced, and we were there for the press conference, um, their UHD TV line. Um, this one um, that we got a picture of was was a massive, um, I believe this was a 85 inch, yeah, yeah. an 85 inch 85. TV. Um, I mean, it looks 
pretty simple, like it's on an easel and stuff like that. And you, you kind of have to be there in person to kind of to kind of gawk at this thing. It, it's I'm I'm kind of a sad that there wasn't a person next to it to kind of give you a sense of scale. But this is the 85 inch that they showed at the press conference. At the booth, there was actually a 110 inch one, which is which is actually. Um, do you, do you remember? It was, was the 110 inch the one that was like on the floor, Andrew, like right in front of you, or was the 110 inch like up high? I, I think it was on the floor, and it wasn't okay. during the press conference, though. So. Right. It was. It was on. It was on the 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 show floor, um, because they had like the way their their display was is they had a. Uh, they had one one of the TVs like right in front of you on the like as you walk into the Samsung booth, and then like they had a bunch more of those TVs, probably the 85 inch ones, up high, like on pedestals and stuff like that. And I think when you put them up high like that, you don't get a true sense of scale, like or how you're really gonna view the thing. But it, it's still impressive, like seeing these big TVs and <clears throat> what's a uh, um, I think with the 85 inch, uh, he was saying that's like basically you have four 42 inch TVs in this thing or something like that. So, um, I mean that that should give you kind of a sense of scale there. Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember when I went to CS last year, the, the, the largest TV that I had seen was, was 86 inches by LG. Mm -hmm. And that blew me away. I was like, there's no reason. Well, I guess there's a number of reasons. I can actually think of three right now. But <laughs> realistically, um, 85 inches is just, you know, humongous. And then to go any larger, you might as well just get a movie room. Right. And I guess that's what people do. Well, I mean, what was nice about it was um i mean the rooms that we that we saw them in like you know whether it was the the show floor which which had a bunch of them there and then there was the press conference even when they brought up the lights you know and on the show floor you know the lights are on it it was still crisp and clean mm -hmm. you know, i don't know if you remember the early days of these big screens you had to kind of dim the lights to see them good yeah um to see the big screens good and uh, like the early plasmas, they had the glare and stuff like that. Um, with with these, it, it's it's pretty nice. And um, I mean, even at the the standard sizes, like the forty two inch or you know the regular sizes that we're used to right now, the OLEDs were pretty uh, were pretty impressive as well. It's kind of hard to describe. I mean, you kind of just have to see them um, because it's not like not like when um, HD came out and and you know we're used to like how DVDs looked and you can say like oh my god it looks so much better or or like you know the difference between your TV and a movie theater it's it's like that it it's kind of harder to quantify this difference other than saying it's four times what HD is so um, I mean it's just it's just uh, we're seeing where the TV and just the TV manufacturers are are looking for growth now and trying to convince us to buy a new TV so um, and every almost every um, every company had you know they were competing on size it looked like so there was you know 100 inch and 110 inch sizes. Okay, so it was a size war? Pretty much but honestly speaking ah. on some of them like the 100 inch ones they didn't look they didn't look like the new, you know, the new technologies on them. Okay. Like the one at, I, I mean, do you remember the one at the LG booth, um, Andrew? It it kind of just looked like a really big, I don't know, LCD or something. So the, um, the 85, right? You were saying, or the 84? No, the, sorry. the 100 inch that uh, oh, yeah. LG had. It didn't look <laughs> as good as like the, you know, the the 4K TVs. So um, like whether the those 100 inch ones were functioning 4Ks. I think Hisense had a really nice looking one mm -hmm. um, at a hundred inch, and uh, uh, but <clears throat> the eighty four inch I I'd, I'd say looked like you know the the largest nice looking market ready ones. <laughs> so I mean we'll we'll see how 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 it goes in the next the next few months or so, so or in well, next I'm, year. 
I'm excited for the technology that's coming out of the TV medium, but I'm also like scared for my pocketbook. Yeah, well, I don't have a pocketbook. Well, but, what, you know, what you have to look forward to, what you have to look forward to right Price now, prices going that, down. Yep, prices going down for the HD TVs. And Sony had a cool practical technology on one of their big TVs. Um, Rad and Andrew were playing. Uh, was that Gran Turismo or was it? Um, Another yeah, it's Gran Turismo. The uh, the dual passive. Yeah. 3D so or... remember on the the PlayStation TV where you could have two 3D glasses. Right. One person could be playing. Right. And I don't see your I don't see your stuff. I you say yeah okay yeah. This one was doing that and it was it worked. I mean <laughs> there was no uh, I don't know if you've tried it on on the previous like last year they had that technology. Yeah. Um, on I, I don't think it was Sony, but it was another. Maybe it was Sony, but it, you could still see partially the other person's screen. R- right. I you remember vaguely. Tell. It was it was amazing. Yeah. It was, it was okay. pretty tight. So, um, I mean, they and they were basically just polarized glasses. Like it wasn't yeah. 3D for both people. It, it wasn't 3D at all for both people. It was like basically like you know how like with 3D it's left and right mm-hmm. lenses. This one would be like left and left, and right and right. It would be right and right. I get it. And I mean, it it, it again. It like, good. You have to see it. It it was really good. It oh, worked. I'm just excited about it. Hey, it's, got, it's got the Vic seal of approval. Vic seal of approval. No, the Bognat of approval. Red red's harder to please. Red it, it has a red seal of approval. All right, all right. If, if it impresses well, only red, because I shoved him into the wall. <laughs> I shoved him into the wall. He got, he got all excited. I'm like, sorry, you crossed my lines there. You, you, you crossed, <laughs> it, what's the Ghostbuster term? You crossed the line. Cross the streams. Cross the streams. You don't shove the boss into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was leading. It's not my fault. He tried to mm-hmm. cut in. <laughs> well, uh, word to the wise, don't race Andrew. <laughs> All right, so, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your coverage and the yep. uh, coverage that's coming out in the next couple of days. Vic, thank you very much for doing all the video editing and everything. Um, yeah, it's I know really you... important to check out the YouTube channel, Lazy Tech TV, because they'll go on there first before we do any posts. And that is true. Them, so I've and... learned my lesson from last year. I, I think it's faster just to put them out there and then... We'll yeah. write later. And we'll clean it up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, thank you again for this uh, CES-related LTG show. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, thank our sponsors one last time, audible.com. Make sure you get your free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. And uh, going to my two co-hosts, Andrew, how can people find you and follow you if they so choose to do so? Um, You can find me on Facebook. I'm pretty easy. Just go off of the Facebook. You hear that? He's pretty easy. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't mean it that way. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> I'm By easy the way, to that find was our, on our... Was our whole week. Um, me like saying stuff like that to Andrew. I was wondering. <laughs> I think I think we got to Friday and I was like, um, Andrew, does that bother you? <laughs> <laughs> That's initiation with the LTG crew. <laughs> I, I already had two initiations already. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, anyways, you guys can... It means he likes you. <laughs> I don't know anymore. All right, so um, how can they follow you? Sorry. Um, <laughs> you can find me off of Facebook through the uh, LTG official Facebook page. I'm practically posting up the... Uh, gaming commentaries or just the gameplay videos or you can follow me on Twitter at uh, basically it has X's at the end <laughs> wow I'm fibbing out today um, X Aushisan X there or you can find me also on Instagram as well same well, same name without the X's for the most part alright thank you and make sure you do check out Andrew's uh, video gameplay video they're actually pretty cool if you're into gaming and you want to see his point of view of uh, how an awesome gamer he is uh, Vic what about you uh, for the most part I'm at LTG Victor on Twitter um, you'll find me on the site when I'm not doing the videos and trying to post them onto the YouTube channel so 
All right, and you can oh, find me. Oh, sorry. Last thing, last innovation I saw. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna slip this in. I'm just gonna slip minute. this in. Go. Uh, and it's it's video related. Look for it on the YouTube channel. It's up there now. Ultra D. They actually, they're they're like the company behind the um, glasses free 3D technology, and the glasses free 3D that they were showing. Up. We we interviewed um, the CEO. There, I believe he was the CEO. Um, he was just, uh, some guy just standing there in a suit. There, we Hello. talked to so many people, I can't remember. <laughs> but, he, anyways, he explained about the technology, like what the challenges were and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen glasses free 3D, but you used to have to stand in a certain spot mm -hmm. and not move at all. Yes, yeah. it wouldn't work. Like this the 3DS, one, you can you can go. There's there's a wide range of. Wow. Uh, uh, viewing area and we talked to those guys and it, uh, it was pretty cool so and it's it really worked so lazy tech tv check it yep. out and uh, you can follow me tony uh, hannity's uh, on our facebook page but also if you want to follow me directly on twitter is at ltg tony and for the rest of the crew like i mentioned uh, you can follow us on facebook or you can go directly to our website lazy tech Dot com. Uh, call us at 707-722-5299. Email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. We're also on Google+, Plus, uh, YouTube channel, as I've mentioned. And we're also a little bit on feed. Uh, we're also on Pinterest. And in terms of podcast, we have it live every Monday, Tuesday, and sometimes Thursday here on the YouTube channel. And we are, can also be found on iTunes, Dogcatcher, uh, pocket cast a ton of different podcast ca catalogs so if you don't see us in one make sure you email us at comments at lazy tech guys and we'll try to get onto the one that you want us to be on so once again guys to the both of you thank you very much andrew vic and to the rest of you out there in la la land have a good night and take care <laughs>